Casey Shearer. Man, on it right away. No holding back, no, no saving that car. He just nailed it right from the drop of the green flag. I believe he's one of the Can-Am factory drivers. So he's going to be out there putting in work. And here comes Jacob Versi as he crosses the line. Let's see where he ends up. Not bad, not bad at all. Time of 236.7. 236.7, that'll put Jacob Versi qualified in that 13th position. Casey, or I'm sorry, Jacob Versi in the top 15 in qualifying. That's one of the faster runs we've had for a little minute. Yeah, quite a bit, yeah. Now we're watching for Casey Shear. And we got a couple more fans parked up on top there. Watching, uh, getting ready to watch uh, Power Hour. That was an interesting line coming out, coming out <laughs> yeah. on top of that one. Yep. He's certainly on the move, but here's the rock. Oh, he got around it nicely. Straddled that big one right there. Travis Zollinger taking the green flag. He's in the course right now. Looks like Casey took a pretty good line wow. going through the Jeep arch. He literally jumped off that hill. He's moving. And Casey Shear kicked off a time of 238.54, 238.54. That'll put him in the 16th qualifying position. Right behind Bailey Campbell. Tomorrow morning's going to be good. <laughs> a lot of good drivers taking off the start of that line. And Travis Zollinger still on course, making his way down now. And we are officially into power hour. Now, if you have just joined us, Scott, what have we got going on? 2019 Can-Am UTV qualifying presented by HCR. And now it is the power hour, the bad boys. Patrick Murray right now just taking the green flag. He's on his way. Travis Zollinger on course, making his way into Hammertown right now. We're running two cars at a time. We're letting one car go out, go about two-thirds of a lap. Once he gets to a certain point, they'll send the second car and keep that rotation going all uh, hour long. I guess you're going to call it power hour. Um, so right now we've got Travis Zollinger, the first car on the course. Getting ready to come back into Hammertown. Here he comes right now. And Patrick Murray just out of sight. And here comes Travis Zollinger. Is that Patrick Murray we got leaving Hammertown? That's Patrick right there. On the gas pedal in his Can-Am. And Travis Zollinger's time, 244.08. 244.08 will put him 29th in line tomorrow morning if everything stands pat where he's at right now. So with Pat Murray on the track right now, 
Uh, still haven't seen who's actually at the line getting ready to come out. You had mentioned some of the names, and, uh, you know, CJ and Johnny Greaves, Lauren Healy, the Guthrie, uh, the Guthrie boys. Um, yeah. We got Brandon Sims. Brandon Sims. Some of the best names, not only just in UTV racing, but in, in other forms of off road racing as well. Absolutely. That was a very interesting <laughs> line coming into that section there by uh, Pat. Gotta say, I'm, I'm liking the color scheme on this one. That roll cage really pops. Aren't those traditional Bombardier colors? Very close to it. Cole Clark taking the green flag. He's underway. Yeah, he's uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this uh, right now at dusk when there's that you're at that one point where it's not bright out and it's not dark out. And it's kind of scary. The it's lights like, don't work either. Huh? The lights don't work in that that yeah, awkward and, time. Yeah. And this is this is really scary and it's like I can't help but think it's dangerous with the shadows being really weird too. Yeah. Where is he going to go? Well, he's taking the longer line. He is carrying that extra pace, though, so might get him to the top quicker. Bouncing off everything. Yeah, he was ricocheting back and forth. That's Hopefully the tires hold up on that one. <laughs> he He's taking no prisoners. Cole Clark is just nailing up there. He's bouncing off of rocks, racing over rocks. He's a rock bouncer in disguise, that's for sure. Yeah, in that area right there, the, the dirt has got to be so loose. That's acting like a plow. I mean, you just get into that, all of a sudden just sucks you down. Yeah. And, and I it's see so like hard to keep the momentum up. About three quarters of the way through, there seems to be a little kicker in there. Yeah. Justin Barth taking the green flag. I missed it. I apologize. Justin Barth now on the course. Cole Clark coming into sight right there. So you see the lights? And let's see. Cole Clark. Wow, what a time by Cole Clark. 232.41 puts him in that sixth qualifying spot. Nice run by that young man. It certainly looked like he was moving out there and the time yeah, reflected 232 that. 232.41, Cole Clark sits in that sixth spot right now. Kyle Chaney's still sitting at the top though. It's gotta be a good feeling. Uh, I don't think he's too comfortable yet. He knows he's raced against some of the guys that are coming up yet, so he, yeah, I can guarantee he's not having too much fun. He's not sleeping yet. <laughs> Justin Barth, we're watching him climb to the top of the mountain and crest it and head on back down. Man, is, are they at a point right now where it's like, hell be damned, just bounce off the rocks, run over them, try to create the straightest line possible down that section, and flat tire, flat tire. If not, 
you got a top spot. I think that's why they call it the power hour. Because <laughs> they come out charging. Matt Zeller in the short course, having just started his qualifying effort. Throwing it in pretty hard in the can -Am. You know what, I, I don't think I've seen a, a four-seater can -Am X3 converted into one of these like desert-style races yet. Those are big vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they eat whoops like you wouldn't believe. Here comes Justin Barth up across the finish line. Let's see where it puts him. Two fifty one point six one two five one point six one. Justin Barth qualifies right now in that forty sixth position. Watching Matt Zeller right now. He's on the move. Wants to get the job done. You know, he's not running the tires like you'd see other cars. I mean, it looks like he's running the the, the desert, the, what are they called, rounded off tires? Yeah. That are able to get through the ruts like that more smoothly. They also look a little skinnier to me, but. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We call those cookie cutters at home. we got Casey Curry on the course, fresh yeah. off his win. Fresh off a trip to uh, Dak Carr. I believe his dad, his uncle, his brother, a couple of crew guys went over there. Always good to see families racing out there. comes Matt Zeller. As there goes Casey. He's on the move through that wash. Wants to get the job done real quick. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of aggression going on right there. Every corner, he's up on, on the bike. Yeah, and he's one of the few guys that have gone right there. Wow. Let's see, is he going to bounce off every rock on the way down? No. Nicely done around the one that's catching everyone. How many of these can -Ams did they take over on their trip? You know, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how many they took. Boy, they sure were tricked out. <laughs> oh, yes. By looking at some of the pictures and videos. Looks like we got Devin Amond on the track. Started off with a hop, skip, and a jump, and then he was underway. And Casey Curry comes across the line. Let's see. Casey Curry, nice run. 232.97. 232.97. Casey Curry currently in the top 10, sitting in the eighth spot. Well done.
Let's see how aggressive Devin is through this. Doesn't appear to be quite on the edge as Casey was. Taking that right hand line. Still pretty smooth though. Not wasting any time. Mark Burnett takes the flag. He's underway. He's begun his qualifying effort. Still waiting for Devin Amond to come into course. Kind of surprised we haven't seen uh, Devin come into screen yet, even in the background watching uh, Mark. Looks like he's heading back into Hammertown. There he is. And let's see what we have for Devin. And Devin Amon, 251.87, 251.87 is qualifying time. It puts him in that 49th starting position. He'll start in the 49th position unless something changes between now and then. Ricky Farmer takes a green flag as he heads out of Hammertown. <laughs> Almost as if somebody told him, hey, there's a bar outside of town. There's happy hour. <laughs> Not power hour, it's happy hour. Happy hour at the Desert Inn. Looks like Lauren Haley. Yeah. What gave that away? <laughs> Could be the color scheme. So we're waiting for Ricky Farmer to come into sight just off to the left side of the screen before they turn loose. Lauren Healy. Talked to him a couple times yesterday and today, and he's just seems like he's just having fun. Same he's old just Lauren. walking around, socializing, hanging out. Yeah, he's good like that. He's a cool dude. Just cruises along, and he's always happy to stop and talk, say hi. Yeah, 
He was uh, trying to bribe the one of the Gomez boys to get a ride in the new T1 truck. Because I've never ridden one. I, I would do anything just to just, just ride it. Don't want to drive it. Just want to ride in it. You know, there's probably a list longer than the whole UTV <laughs> race of people that want to go for a ride in that T1. And let's see, Ricky Farmer, what was his time? 254.29, 254.29 for Ricky Farmer. Puts him in that 54th qualifying position. And let's see, is this Lauren right here? Lauren, is he's on the move. Which way do you reckon he's going to go? Too hard to call it. Oh, interesting. To the right. I think he's been watching enough video. Looks like we got Cody Curry on the line in his Monster Energy Can Am. You know, he doesn't get enough credit for his driving ability. He's an incredibly talented driver. Um, I've seen him in a pro light a few times, you know, short course truck. Yeah, yep. Did very, very well. Um, but he's meticulous. He's like a thinker driver. Yeah. You know? Um, Doesn't he run all the race ops and, and like, semi-crew chief for, for Casey most of the time? You know, I, I haven't caught up with him. I mean, he's bounced around a few times. I know he was with Fox for a while. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, with uh, Walker Evans for a little bit. He's back with Curry. Um, but I'm not exactly sure... More than likely, yeah. I would have no. Remember earlier I was talking about weight transfer. Yep. Now I was seeing it right there with with uh, Cody. Jabbing the brakes and just made the turn. Was able to rotate, get back underway. And here comes Lauren. Lauren Neely. is on the move. <laughs> As Cody heads out of sight, let's see what Lauren Healy. 235 flat, 235 flat, Lauren Healy, 11th quick in qualifying. That was a good run, clean, and it got him there with a decent, respectable time. Yeah, we were saying earlier, um, I think if you can start in the first third yep. of the starting order, you're doing pretty decent. Absolutely. Cody's charging hard, packing his lines on the fly. Taking a gamble on the left line. Boy, look how it just cases all the way up, just rides the, the belly pan. Let's see, I think this is one of the uh, Guthrie's, I think. Looks like we got Guthrie Sr. on the course. like Cody's heading back into Hammertown pushing that can m there goes as senior. Guthrie senior rolls That's out of town and Cody Curry his time 236 23 236 23 he'll qualify in that 16th spot Certainly yourself in the top 20 again. It's respectable, respectable and should be very comfortable with that starting position. Now you got to love watching the Guthrie's race. Yeah, they're he's just one of the OGs. Yep, yeah, they just have this finesse and, and they just get the job done. And then you have the, the father-son battle between Mitchie and Guthrie Sr. You know, it's mm -hmm. always good to watch. 
There's one of the Greaves boys lined up. I'm not able to tell. That might. I think it's Johnny. Uh. Yep, that's Johnny, 22. Now keep in mind, the Greaves boys, father and son, finished uh, qualifying last year first and second. Wow. So this uh, these th this is definitely one driver to keep your eye on. He's a man on a mission. He's lifting wheels. Yeah, he's got that Steve Kinzer thing going, that left yep. front up in the air. Mitch Gussery coming back into town. See where Mitchy. Tell you what, Johnny is on a mission. Mitch Guthrie, two thirty-two point five four, two thirty-two point five four. He sits in the eighth starting position for Mitch Guthrie Senior. That's a cool looking car too. They always, whether it's their trucks or their uh, Yamahas, they, they always, always look, look good. Like super sharp, yeah. Certainly not shy of throwing that thing around, is he? No, and there's CJ getting ready to take the green flag. Style points. That's you what he's hear going that for. You inside the truck too. <laughs> yep. I'd almost have to say over the last probably five years. Whoa. That uh, CJ is probably in the last five years, not overall, but in the last five years, um, probably the one of the best off-road racers in the world. Wow. And here comes his dad, Johnny, up on two Whoa. wheels. The final corner, he's still up on two wheels. <laughs> Both these Grieve boys are going for max style points, aren't they? Big bicycle. How about this? Rodeo. Johnny Greaves doing his <laughs> best Joey Chitwood impression. His time, 228.49, 228.49. He'll start in that seventh starting position. Now, CJ's going to want these bragging rights. Oh, yeah. He's going to put up with his dad. Oh, I see more than a few Pro 4 racers where they have basically checked out from the entire field, just the two of them, and CJ just messes with his dad. Just <laughs> messes with him. <laughs> nothing like some father-son rivalry. And there's nothing more th that Johnny loves than that. When him and his – when, Yeah. <laughs> Just a few cor cars remaining. Will Kyle Cheney and Ronnie Anderson and Phil Blurton be able to keep on uh, keep those top three spots? As Brandon Sims now on the course. Brandon Sims has been out all week pre-running. He was out there having a good time. CJ should be coming in around any second now. You think he's going to go for more style points? Whatever gets him across the line the quickest, I think CJ will be doing. <laughs> Good call. Whatever that takes. Actually, I missed it. He's already crossed the line. He was off camera. CJ Greaves. Whoa. 225.84. 225.84. C.J. Greaves qualifies in the top five. That's a well-earned spot.
I don't think we've had any of the guys in the power hour take that uh, secondary line there coming out of the wash. No, I think they've been watching the broadcast and kind of checking the lines out that way too. Ooh, Brandon Sims taking the left-hand line. So James Cantrell now on the course as we wait for Brandon Sims to come into Hammertown. Brandon Sims just peeked around the corner as he came in. Let's see. Brandon Sims, 235.91. 235.91. That'll put him in that 17th qualifying position. James Cantrell, lights are on and in use. Takes that right lane. This junior? <laughs> Dustin Robbins off the line. James Cantrell up across the line, trips the clock. Two thirty-eight point six five. Two thirty-eight point six five. That'll put James Cantrell starting tomorrow morning in that twenty-sixth starting position. I believe that. Looks like Mitch Guthrie Jr. right there as we wait for Dustin Robbins now. There he is. Cars just dragging along the bottom. High siding those ruts the whole way up. Got Mitchy out there, taking the green and running with it.
Now waiting for Dustin Robbins to come back into view to finish his uh, qualifying lap. And Mitchie's going to be pushing hard, I think, to try and keep up with his dad. Obviously, one of the uh, betting favorites in this race, the Guthries. Certainly has some pace through that wash. Wow, some nice speed out of Guthrie right there down that straightaway. Here he is coming back around through the Jeep arch. Time to beat for the best or for the top spot is 221.40. 221.40 is the time to beat. And he does it! 221.17! Guthrie, Mitch Guthrie Jr. does it with a 221.17 by just shy of three tenths of a second. Mitch Guthrie Jr. is your fast qualifier here this afternoon. What a solid effort oh. out there. That certainly paid off. Wow. Not only did he beat Dad, but he took out the top <laughs> spot. I think I hurt everybody's ears here inside the production truck. Sorry, guys. Man, if you're going to wear the crown coming into uh, King of the Hammers 2019, because he won it last year, yep. um, what a way to pick up where you left off Absolutely. by being the fastest qualifier. And the thing is, there's nothing, there's nobody happier than Dad. Nobody's happier than him right now. Absolutely. So it turned out to be a pretty good day here at uh, the dry lake bed. Well, I don't know about so much dry, but it's, it's, a, it's a lake bed just the same. Tell you what I'm excited for tomorrow. We got some... Serious talent in the in the top third of this race. Once again, keep in mind uh, the live broadcast starts tomorrow at five to eight, seven fifty-five in the morning. We'll get rocking and rolling for the race. It's the KM UTV 2019 uh, King of the Hammers, and here's Monday's schedule. And this is going to be so much fun. But right around 10 a.m. in the morning, the four wheel parts every man challenge qualifying, which always is uh, super exciting. Then on Monday night, this is cool. This is where a ton of cool videos are shot from. Lots of really neat pictures. The broadcast starts at 6 o'clock approximately uh, on Monday night for the Holly EFI Shootout presented by KMC King and AFC. So it's going to be kind of cool. And then uh, on Tuesday, another live broadcast. Lots of live broadcasts going on. You yeah, see a pattern funny here? funny <laughs> It's uh, the qualifying for the bad boys, the Nitto. 2019 King of the Hammers uh, qualifying starting at 8 o'clock in the morning approximately, uh, going to just past 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So tune in for that as well. That one's That's powered be by Optima cool Batteries. On there. Huh? That one's powered by Optima Batteries. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's fantastic and, uh, to have those guys This on has board. become very one of the more popular races of the week. Uh, every Man Challenge. Four-wheel parts, Every Man Challenge will be broadcast live at uh, 7.55 a.m., 
Now, keep in mind, Pacific Standard Time. So when you talk to your buddies back at home or message them, let them know that this they, is uh, California time. they got to get out of bed at 2 o'clock in the stuff. morning. Yeah. And then on Thursday, this is something brand spanking new. The Toyota Tires Desert Invitational brought to you by Monster. It's Thursday, February 7th for the first time ever. T1 Trucks, Desert Trucks, going to be racing here at uh, the Dry Lake Bed at 8 o'clock in the morning approximately once again. So make sure to tune in there. Some of the biggest names ever in off-road racing, invitational only. So uh, it's going to be a good huge, time. Some huge, huge names going to be here. And then finally, the big one, the big one on Friday. Live broadcast starts at 7.45 in the morning. So tune in early as you're going to see some of the best drivers in the world take the green flag as they pursue the 2019 King of the Hammers Week Awards is also being broadcast the very next morning at 9.30 and uh, see some very probably really, really happy, really, really tired drivers and crews and sponsors up on stage to accept their uh, 2019 awards. So lots to watch, lots to do, lots to take in. Uh, do some homework. Uh, I mean, the action's already started, man. Absolutely. It has. It's been a fantastic day, actually, with the uh, Can-Am kickoff today and tomorrow. Then we're going to be uh, rolling straight into the action where ev everybody's getting into their rigs and getting ready. And let's take a look at our top 20, which there was a big shakeup in uh, the running order. And there's our top 10. Cole Clark jumped in there towards the end of the qualifying session. Johnny Greaves as well. Kind of surprised you didn't get more out of him, uh, more towards the top. Austin Wayland was uh, there for a long time. so he. And how about Sarah Price in the top 10? Sat there all day long and survived the top 10 qualifying spot. C.J. Greaves, one of the last cars that come out, he's in the top 10 as well. Jason Willer uh, was first for a long, long, long time this afternoon. Falls back to the fifth spot, Phil Blurton. We'll qualify fourth. Ronnie Anderson, what a young gun right there. And how about Kyle Cheney? And then again, current reigning champion is now also your fast qualifier, the KM UTV race presented at HCR, their fast qualifier, Mitch Guthrie Jr. And here's our 11th through 20th, Mitch Guthrie, the dad, Shannon Campbell, the dad, Casey Curry in our top 15, Paul Hart, Lauren Healy in our top 15, Griffin Knox. Dustin Jones, Brandon Sims, Jeff McKinley, and Michael Lee will run out the top 20 in qualifying for tomorrow's event. Any last words? I've got to say that can -Am's done a good job at uh, providing us these stats with the Can-Am leaderboard. Yeah, it's, it's definitely helping, yeah. Well, we want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in today because this basically kind of sets the tone. Yes, Bates it does. everybody's breath a little bit, you know, kind of gets them anxious, you know. Yep. And uh, you know what? Th I guess you'd say the, the balloon has popped for one hell of a week of racing, huh? Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the 2019 King of the Hammers. We're going to be here today and tomorrow, Scott and myself, Caleb. Well, once again, we'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, for tomorrow's UTV race. We'll see you then.